Let's move on to the Eastern Partnership Summit, which took place in Vilnius, Lithuania, uh, about two weeks ago. Now, there's been a lot of coverage of this issue, and it's been covered from a lot of perspectives, frankly, none that I'm very appreciative of. What took place in, Ukra in Vilnius, Lithuania, was Ukraine was offered a trade package, which included visa-free entry for Ukrainians into the European Union. In addition to that, uh, trade, some, some beneficial trade deals, which would maybe alleviate some economic concerns in, in Ukraine. Now, this all seems good from the outside. Ukraine was given, in return, a demand that they have to release Yulia Tymoshenko, a former leader who was uh, jailed on corruption charges. She would go to Germany to receive medical treatment. Now, would she come back from Germany is another question, which Ukraine, of course, I'm sure would like to know the answer to. In addition to this, Manufacturing in Ukraine is not exactly up to modern standards, and the European Union would demand that they upgrade most of their manufacturing centers, which would cost in the excess of tens of billions of dollars. Some places I've seen estimated a hundred billion, which, frankly, in a in a in an economy which only has a few hundred billion GDP uh, at this moment, two hundred. I don't can't pull out the exact number, hundred to two hundred billion dollar GDP. It's just not feasible to invest $100 billion in manufacturing when you don't, simply don't have that money. Now, about this visas. The visas, I know I've met many Ukrainians in my travels. This story is somewhat personal to me because I'm Lithuanian American, as you can see from our, from our flags. And I've lived in Vilnius, so I have an affinity for Eastern Europe. I, I love the place, I, I'll be honest. I, I, would, I would enjoy spending my life there, uh, and I probably will someday, so the rest of it. But uh, I've met many people in my journeys, people from Ukraine, and what they tell me, what I've learned from them, is that they do want closer cooperation with Europe, because if you've been to Europe, if anyone has been to Europe, the people who do travel throughout Europe, it's very easy to travel. You can go visa-free within the European Union, the, Schen the Schengen Zone, you can, you can study abroad easily, you can get better options for your life. These are all wonderful things that, that frankly, I, I can't argue against. However, you cannot discount what is underlying this. What is the benefit for Western Europe of having a visa-free regime with Ukraine? It's certainly not to benefit Ukrainians. That's not going to benefit Western Europe. What's going to benefit Western Europe is cheap labor flooding out of Ukraine into Western Europe, easily exploited in, in, in any number of fields. So, just like what happened after the Soviet collapse, where many people from Eastern Europe, Central Europe, flooded into Western Europe, Central Europe, uh, bigger economies, what happened in Germany, East Germans went to West Germany to work, huge, even, even in East Germany they stayed, huge uh, uh, exploitation of labor, cheap labor, because of lower standards of living, lower wages. That's absolutely something that is going to be exploited, and it's something that Ukraine is aware of. So, something to keep in mind when you see these visa-free entry into Europe, you have to take two sides of that coin. In addition, something that's not mentioned rarely is the geographical breakdown of Ukraine. Right now there's protests, many protests right now in Ukraine taking place in Kiev and other cities. But most of the major protests are taking place in the northwestern part of the country, in the western and the north part of the country, which is a majority of ethnic Ukrainians, people who, are, who, are, who do not have as much Russian family who are not Russian. Many of the Russian, ethnic Russians who are in Ukraine live in the south and the east. And there's a definite geographic split between the country, as in cities like Odessa, you, you just do not see the same vitriol against, against the party of regions, which is the ruling re party of Ukraine, as you do in Kiev, where they just tore down a statue of Vladimir Lenin, Cert certainly a, a split in that country, which should be acknowledged more, because th there, is, there is more to democracy than just mass action. We, the sans culottes, believe in mass action. This is what the French Revolution was about. It's about getting out into the streets and getting something done. We support the people in Kiev's right to make their voice heard. That is their right. They should have this right. They want to pull down a statue of London. God bless. But we also have to take into account that there's a huge part of that country that has no agreement with them. And maybe, maybe the louder voice is winning the argument right now.
and not necessarily the larger voice.